have a page of questions that if you're feeling ambitious, you can go to with this short URL. Um, and we're going to literally set an alarm for each one. We have four questions, rapid fire, 10 minutes for the first one, six for all the others. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, so um, I think, uh, unfortunately, I wasn't here yesterday, but um, it certainly was discussed this morning uh, on how to explain uh, the digital uh, mental science in a hierarchy, very hierarchy, and of course, the defining the very universe of the hierarchy. And uh, there is, there are the usual suspects that have been uh, again uh, posed uh, in body forms, uh, let's find the game. And um, uh, so th the first question is uh, what we need of these, uh, if a combination of these, or one of them is uh, a favorite culprit and so on. So what do you think we need to explain the UV luminosity function at high Z? We were thinking of taking a vote. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. That's, that's that was the exactly idea. the plan. First, high stroke formation efficiency feedback free stuff. I don't know a lot of you think so. We got one, two. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be home. Three. And then if no one votes for anything, there's like banana slugs on here. Thirstiness. Oh. One, two, three, four, five, six. Top 30. <laughs> IMF. Top 10. Roberto, I think this is yours. You like this one, right? No, actually, I like this one. I thought that the two of us don't vote. I oh. actually. We don't vote. I, I like the first one. <laughs> so can't be. So a, a smattering again, a handful of five. Uh. We should have. Been, we, we listen. This is this is a live document. Please add it. Uh, you, yeah, you know, we forget it. You add it. We vote on it. We forgot the nebulous continuum. Top five AMS. One. Voted. That was a handful. No, ah. we're, we're up to dust. Dust. Rejected or not yet formed. No one. Discussed. Uh, no, indeed. No. So you can vote for more than one. Yes. <laughs> so it's not either or. Sorry. Yep. Yep. Okay, <laughs> nothing, and, and something in the simulations need to be refined, and this is not exclusive. Well, we didn't vote for the number of Oh, oh. <laughs> Nettabular continuum. Ten. Something in the simulation needs to be done. Time step. Resolution. I think it's that plus combination of things. Okay, but if you Oh, wait. Cosmology. Ah, uh, yeah, cosmology. Good. Cosmology. Cancel. Maybe. Yeah, oh, we have maybe. So the and winners are, Roberto? I think the birthness was the one getting most. Uh. Yes, and then the second one was more like IMF and nebula continuum, I think, would be. I agree with that. Anyone want to write a summary statement? You're welcome to do that. Um, so we should maybe Roberto list us just highlight in blue the big one, the red and blue the big one. Oh, I can do that if you want. Maybe the document. Comments, questions, thoughts on this, and we have a mic for you. Maybe you should talk in the mic.
Okay, hello? Is it working? Yeah. Yeah. So, but pre I mean, so it, it's as if we don't have any observations or any way of determining, like, which of these is right. I mean, presumably that's been a lot of the discussion of the conference, but, uh, you know, I mean, like, for example, with the high star formation efficiency, presumably eventually you'd be able to verify with, with dynamical masses or other sorts of... I mean, there's, there's each of these things should have as essentially a, a way of determining conclusively from the observation that this is actually going on, rather than just a bunch of conjecture. For a few words from Joel, actually. This list probably has something to do with the real universe, but you know they can all explain the luminosity function. But we need observations. We need more observations. We need long exposure or you know factor for everything to help us tell apart or distinguish this model scenarios. So this is not my area of research, but I was just wondering if there's a reason that ABN is not on here. Let's have a vote for AJ. Okay. <laughs> huh? So I have a quick, I guess, question. Um, it, this might be coming later, but it seems to me like a lot of hands went up with burstiness, which I put my hand up. But it seems to me like the really tricky thing is that these things, a lot of these galaxies are so small and dense. So if you have these models where burstiness, they're blowing themselves up. They're not particularly dense for long. So it seems to me like kind of understanding the sizes and the luminosity function at the same time is kind of the hard trick. There's probably lots of ways to get the luminosity function right, but getting these incredibly dense things, maybe that's when you need the feedback for you. Yeah. Situation. I don't know. Because, uh, for instance, the, the, the most distant, uh, which is very luminous, is not particularly compact and dense. Is it bimodal? I mean, where is the? Who said it was bimodal? comment just to follow up with what said point like these are not mutually exclusive and I, I totally agree with Richard that we should be focusing on the things that make an actual testable prediction. I think every simulation now that resolves the IM the uh, the ISM says that the high risk of galaxies are close to this is which is not new, right? But you know the question is whether <laughs> the question is is whether it's it's enough. Um, and so that's why these these other these other ideas have been proposed because not every simulation is as bursty, for example, as fire. And one of the points I wanted to make, I think, with the IMF, there's there's sort of there's an important sort of <coughs> way to think about this. You can vary the upper mass slope of the IMF, but if you don't change the maximum mass of the IMF, it makes no testable prediction. The only thing you could look at is metal abundances, and this is going to be incredibly hard with the data we have. If, for example, you make the, the stars more massive, now you're in a regime where you can actually test it. So it might not be a right answer, but at least you can rule that model out. I was actually going to disagree slightly with Harley because there is a testable prediction if you change the IMF slope, which is it changes the mass of remnants at z equals zero a lot. And so there's a limited amount of leverage you have there without making your descendants of these galaxies so full of black holes that 
the mass to light ratios are totally wrong. So. Sure, if you said this if IMF lasts for 10 minutes and then it's over, you can get away with it. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah. Okay, but I, but I was going to comment on the bursting. I mean, we know how to do this at low redshift. At low redshift, I mean, paper written by, I think, a student or postdoc working with Sandy and, and me five, seven years ago, ten years ago, um, looking, assessing bursty, burstiness in Z of one guy. And there, I mean, the standard technique is the is the H alpha to UV ratio distribution. You know what that should look like for steady star formation, and then you can sort of say, well, all right, is the distribution I observe wider than what I measure? Now, I'm not going to do H alpha to UV at redshift 10, but it seems like there ought to be analogous ways of doing this, right? This is this is a problem we know how to solve at low redshift, and it's just a matter of Finding the right diagnostic at high range. If I may, so yes, that's a good proposal, but it's not so simple because they generate with CI ion and the strip fraction, so we don't. <laughs> Well, let's say, if you have a, lot, a, a very uh, excellent spectroscopic information, it can solve the degeneracy. And we spent 20 minutes on this. We did write a point on that, but uh, <laughs> we can move on to the next question. Just keep it equal time. Okay. Are these characters zeroized during cold mode accretion? If not, how do we interpret our observations? Do they have? Are they in like a dynamically? I don't know if you can answer that. Are they? Do they have all the energy? Does this specification? mind that at Z of 10, we're talking about a universe that's a thousand times higher density. So if you see something happening today at some rate, imagine it happening roughly a thousand times more in a given volume of space. I would say there's nothing that is settled in a quiet region unless you find very rarefied 
still relatively empty areas. So I think if we're trying to find the environment will make a difference if the car volume is set on the people and it's just traveling. Observations or simulations uh, do we need to identify the progenitors uh, of the Dobros clusters? Um, are we seeing them in Rashid 2 for me or Rashid 7? And maybe do we have already some uh, some more solid evidence for these progenitors in the current data? Are these the clumps in uh, uh, Rashid 2 or, or more disks uh, or these combat spaces that we are detecting with? web or is the nitrogen abundance already an indication that we are seeing those uh, formations? So I think it's I think it's a really intriguing observation that the N over O's are consistent and, and there's the paper obviously today from Michael Topping showing the aluminum in emission which is also uh, pretty interesting. The only concern I have about this is if you actually calculate the amount of nitrogen that's being illuminated, it's nowhere near enough to make a globular cluster, because Roberto, as you pointed out, it's a very high density, so you don't need a lot of it to actually enrich the stars of a local GC. And it's off in our basic estimates, right? That's two orders of magnitude. So either we're seeing a very tiny fraction of the total nitrogen, the enrichment is somehow going on over a long period of time, which would be quite hard to get to the metal or, you know, like the, the iron machine throughout, uh, or it's, they're not the progenitors, so I think the it's a sort of mass budget problem, but in kind of a different way than we're typically looking for nitrogen. Can do that. So I mean, it, it, it seems to me like, well, it's intriguing. It does not address what what seems to me like the hardest globular cluster problem, which is the multiple stellar populations. Uh, you know, I, I, I mean. It, it it doesn't hurt, but I don't see how it I don't I don't see how it offers any help with that part of the problem. Yeah, well, according to the paper, but, but it couldn't see you know, it does uh, help, but I'm not sure I can actually talk for him. But anyway, um, any other comments? Um, Properties that we 
indicating here the different uh, regime where gas is produced uh, by different channels and the growth, uh, there is a growth that goes through different channels or we have still to say where is is there a dust crisis with oh, that? Yeah, I was particularly sensitive to this. Okay. Well, I, I don't know if I'm going to say something wrong, but it sounds to me that it was the old problem where people went trying to explain the counts in supersymmetric galaxies. They found that models couldn't uh, reproduce the counts in uh, from some supersymmetric sources. I think uh, one of the ideas was to assume a top-heavy IMF and think that everybody was happy with that at, 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 uh, 20 years ago or so. But it, it sounds to me that uh, we are lacking of data, actually, uh, about that. So when one tries to, to make a, a consensus of the, uh, luminos uh, of the far infrared luminosity at different redshifts, one sees that the data actually is very different from different authors or from different samples. So there are, for me, it, it, it looks like there are uh, large uncertainties from cosmic variants. So for example, the, Alp the Alpine survey, it's a very small survey. When you compare it to other uh, surveys that have a slightly larger area, you see that they are very different. I don't know if uh, Toltec, uh, based on Helen Keeble, would be right, but I think I'm going to show something uh, tomorrow about it. We, we did some stacking with Herschel and with Alma and trying to see uh, the shape of the cosmic star formation history up to H5, and uh, it's boringly overlapping on the Madao plot. Uh, so so no, no big change. Two comments. Um, one, when objects are very small, cross section is much more affected by the size squared. That's one thing. Secondly, I think the people who study dust and other people indicates a very high importance of, of turbulence and radius that they use Mach number as a relevant issue. So things change a lot. And I get the sense watching all this that turbulence plays a big role. And I think if you take that into account, you might be able to play with the fall of prices. I think we're not taking turbulence explicitly. I haven't heard that term used a lot. But I remember that that's actually fit. That's very, very important for distribution sizes Third point, people seem to talk about screen models. I think that dust is much more complex here. So if you again squeeze things down to smaller sizes, the regions are smaller, you get quite different effects from a given amount of dust. Finally, the temperature. <laughs> yeah. What I meant by studies is when you have to put more than 100% of the metal into dust. And indeed, may go down to uh, the measure, the way you measure. Any more comments, questions? Otherwise, we are since the end. Have a good evening. Thank yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs>